Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So obviously you can probably tell my setup is a little bit different. Um, it kind of doesn't look all that great. I kind of just um, threw it together really quick um, before I made this video, but I'm going to be fixing it soon. I rearranged everything in my room to make things more space efficient for me, but then now it kind of doesn't look as good in the background. So um, for those of you who really like having a nice background, I'm going to be fixing it soon, but it does take me a while because I'm very bad at interior design and coming up with things like that. I just wanted to say that for anyone who notices that type of thing and might say something in the comments about how my background looks kind of funny, um, I totally agree and I'll be fixing it soon. Anyways, now on to the important thing, which is today's case. So today's case is one that obviously just like every other case that we talk about, it's very frustrating, but I do think that it has the potential to be solved. And I feel like this case today is very dependent on tips and sightings for where it's at today. And it's one of those cases that I feel like based on tips and people seeing his story and his face, it might actually be solved eventually. And obviously that's the goal with every single video that I make either to spread awareness about an issue or try to maybe even get a case solved or even help out with, you know, putting the information together for people who don't want to go through and read, you know, a bunch of different articles and put it all together themselves. But this one, out of all the cases that I've done, I feel like having people see his face and know his story might actually help bring in some tips and some sightings which are very vital to this case. I'm covering this case not because anyone suggested it to me, which is very rare. Almost all the cases that I cover are directly from my email or my Patreon, but this one I stumbled across it and, you know, casually just going through different cases on a day-to-day -day basis for fun, but I read into this case and I thought that this case definitely needs more exposure, it definitely needs more eyes on it, so that is why I'm doing this case. Maybe if someone sees this video, they'll realize that they did see this person somewhere, or maybe, you know, it might put pressure on those involved if he was harmed to come forward and possibly, again, get some movement in this case. But either way, with all of that being said, let's just get right into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the unsolved disappearance of Robert Hoagland. Robert Hoagland was 50 years old when he went missing on July 28th, 2013. He lived in Sandy Hook, Connecticut and was married to his wife, Lori, and together they had three sons. Sam, who was the youngest at 21 years old at the time, Max, who was 23, and then Chris, the oldest at 25 years old. Robert, whose friends called him Hoagie, actually met his wife Lori when they were in their early 20s when they were both in culinary school. They had their first son together soon after they graduated and then were married soon after that. Now, Robert was known to be a family man. He was known to always be there for his kids. He spent a ton of time with them and was so energetic and just absolutely loved his family. For quite a while, he worked as a professional chef but as you can imagine, the hours with this job were just horrible. He worked long, endless hours, and it came to the point where he started to feel like he was missing out on his kids and their lives. So in 2001, he went back to school to actually become a real estate appraiser so that he could be self-employed and have a job that allowed him to be home more and spend a lot more time with his kids going to their school activities and watching their sports. By 2012, he had also decided to work at a friend's law firm. Now he didn't have a law degree and he didn't have a ton of experience with this kind of work, but his friend needed help around the office so he was happy to be there. Lori worked as a culinary arts teacher and they seemed to have a very happy marriage. Now at one point, the two did separate for about two years but they came back together and reconciled their differences. And at the time that he disappeared, the two had actually been saving and planning for their retirement together. So a lot of people might point to this as him not being happy with his marriage for a very long time. And for a while that could have been true, but just think about it. They met in their early twenties. He was 50 when, when he went missing. So they have been together for almost 30 years at that point and taking a two year break 
does not seem like a lot in the grand scheme of things. Now, Max, their middle child, had actually struggled very badly with substance use. In 2012, he was actually caught shoplifting so that he could sell the items that he got for money for drugs. This behavior was very common for Max and this was definitely not the last time that this would happen. In early 2013, he actually did go to rehab and he had been to rehab several times. But this time when he got out, he went to live with his grandparents. But after a few months, his grandparents were no longer able to take care of Max and all of his issues. So he went back to live with his parents that same year. They did their best to make sure that Max was clean and was heading on the right path, but they struggled just like any other parents would in this type of situation. I will get a lot more into this later, but Robert did do things to try and ensure that Max was on the right path, but he wasn't strict enough and he knew he wasn't strict enough. He had a sneaking suspicion that Max was still using, but a lot of the things that he did was more so making it harder for him to engage in these behaviors rather than making it completely impossible. So then in July of 2013, Lori had actually gone on a two-week trip to Turkey with some of her friends while Robert stayed back home. But while she was gone, the two regularly maintained contact with each other and things seemed to be very normal between the two of them. Now, a few days before Lori was going to come back to the US, she had spoken to Robert and asked him if he could pick her up from the airport. Then the two had spoken again the night of the 27th and he confirmed that he was in fact going to pick her up. Not only that, but Robert had spoken to a few friends and family members and kind of mentioned that he was going to be picking up Lori from the airport in a couple of days. So when the next day rolled around, Robert took Lori's car to go buy some breakfast bagels at the local bakery. Then he stopped at the mobile gas station on Churchill Road near Interstate 84 to fill up on gas. He was seen on surveillance inside the gas station paying for gas, as well as buying a map of the eastern part of the United States at around 6.45 a.m. He then returned home where him and his son Max had breakfast together. After they ate, Robert had paid a couple of bills and then went online to just play Scrabble for a little bit. At around 10 a.m., he went out to go mow the lawn, and then as he was doing this, Max grabbed the keys to Lori's Volkswagen Golf and told his dad that he was going to be back in a couple of hours. The next day was the day that Lori was going to be returning back to the U.S. from Turkey. She had gotten off of her long flight and then walked outside of the airport and waited for her husband, but she didn't see him there. She tried calling him, but he didn't answer his phone. She sat there and waited for two hours, but he just didn't show up. So she just decided to take a cab home. She was expecting to see him at home, but when he wasn't there, she was really confused and had no idea where he could be. She had started calling around her friends to see if anyone had seen him, but no one had seen him. At this point, she was hysterical because at first she just thought that, you know, he could have forgotten to pick her up, maybe he confused the dates, but the more people that she called who said that they hadn't seen him, the more and more panicked she became. Around 7.30 p.m. on July 29th, when Robert was still nowhere to be found, Lori reported him missing to the Newtown Police Department in Connecticut. So immediately, police put out a bolo for Robert's car, and they actually very quickly got a hit. A Bridgeport police officer had spotted Robert's car parked on the side of the road with someone in the driver's seat in an area that was known for a lot of drug activity. When police asked the driver for his ID, they found out that it was actually Robert's son, Max, who was driving the car. The officer called Lori and she was very upset and disappointed that Max was in this area of town. But even more, she wanted to know what he knew about where his father was. She asked him if he knew where he was since he was the last person known to have seen him, but he said no, he didn't know. He said that the last time he saw Robert was when he was mowing the lawn and he left to borrow the car that previous day. He said that when he got home that night, 
that Robert still wasn't home. And then when he woke up the next morning, Robert still wasn't there. He said that he tried to call his dad several times, but he never picked up. But either way, Max admitted to the officer that he was in fact in the area for drugs, so the officer arrested him for trespassing. So that next day, Lori and the police basically went around the house to see if they could find anything that seemed out of place or if they could find any clues whatsoever to where Robert may have gone. She saw that the shoes that he wore pretty much every day was in the same place that he had always left them. His white t-shirt that he wore all the time was still in the dryer. Police noted that his tennis shoes were right next to the lawnmower where he had left them, and his passport was right where it should have been, and his high blood pressure medications, which he needed, were still there. The only things that they didn't find were Robert's wallet and his car keys. But other than that, everything else was perfectly in place and nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary. So initially, police believed that it was very possible that Robert had just walked away from his life and just went off to start a new one. We know that in a lot of cases, it's very frustrating when police just kind of jump to this conclusion, but in Robert's case, they seem to have a pretty good reason to believe this. So 19 years earlier, the Hoagland family basically packed up and moved across the country to California. Now, at this point in Robert and Lori's life, they just wanted to follow this dream and move somewhere new while their three boys were still very young, but they didn't have any money and it was a lot harder for them to find jobs than they had originally thought. Eventually, Robert did get a job as a chef at a country club, and while he worked there, everything seemed to be going very well for the family. However, one random day, Robert got up for work and got ready as normal before telling Lori that he was going to be home late that day and not to wait up for him. He acted completely normal and told Lori that he loved her before going to work. Pretty quickly, Lori found out that two days previously, he had actually lost his job at the country club. Robert left and didn't come back home for another three weeks after that. When he finally did come back to his family, he told them that he was afraid and ashamed and didn't know what to do since he was no longer able to provide for his family since he didn't have a job. However, when he went missing that previous time, he didn't seem to make it a point to stay hidden very well. He took the family car, he used his credit card as normal, and he was very easily trackable. So at this point, police weren't sure if maybe that was, you know, a practice run, or if he really was just trying to leave his life before later deciding to come back, or if he had just left to try and make some money before coming back and facing his family. So it's not 100% if this was an indicator that he wanted to run away, but it very well could have been. Also, like I mentioned earlier, he was known to have gone to the bagel shop, then the gas station shortly before he disappeared. But like I mentioned earlier, Robert had purchased a map of the Eastern United States when he was at the gas station. Now, Robert was the type of guy who pretty religiously used maps to get around. He wasn't interested in using a GPS whatsoever and just wanted to follow the maps. So if he was going to get somewhere, he would have used a map to get there. Also that day, police found out that he had actually withdrawn $600 from the ATM. So along with his history of possibly running away, this even furthered police's theory that he could have just left his life. Obviously, he bought this map for a reason and he was taking a lot of cash out that same day for a reason. But what was strange was that he left behind his medications that he needed. He left behind his phone and his passport so he wouldn't have been able to get anywhere without the passport. Then beyond all of that, he actually had a locked up safe that had thousands of dollars in cash in it. And a few days after he went missing, Lori was able to access this safe and found that there wasn't a single dollar missing from the safe. So if he was going to run off, that was money that he would have needed and could have easily taken. But police searched the home. They searched all of his cars, including the one that they found Max driving, and they didn't find anything suspicious. They did forensic testing on everything. They used sniffer dogs to cover all of their bases, but they didn't find a single trace of 
anything. There was nothing pointing to foul play and everything was pointing to him just leaving. But then, two weeks after Robert's disappearance, something really strange was found. Now, like I mentioned earlier, police weren't able to locate his keys or his wallet, so it seemed that everything was in place except for those two items, which technically is all he would need if he was going to run off. However, as Lori was just sort of going through things in the home, she actually found both of these items. Robert's car keys and his wallet were hidden under a doll, which is actually where he usually hid them to keep Max from getting to his wallet and his keys so that he couldn't take them without his permission. So after all of this, they definitely started to wonder if maybe Robert's disappearance could actually have something to do with Max and his involvement in drugs. So during all of this, Max had been jailed for trespassing for the incident that we discussed earlier. So police used this as a perfect time to question Max and find out exactly what he knows and if he really did know something about his father's disappearance. Of course, he denied knowing anything, but he did say one very interesting thing to investigators. Now, while Lori was away in Turkey, Robert had actually reached out to Lori and told her that Max had been trying to steal her two laptops to go ahead and sell them for drug money. So Robert went ahead and hid them in her car and took the key away so that he could not get to them. Again, this was another instance of Robert having to hide things from his son Max, like we mentioned earlier with the wallet and keys. So this was not out of the ordinary behavior for him. But turns out while Robert was sleeping, Max found these car keys and took the car without his knowledge. Max had basically been going around to different very sketchy areas of Bridgeport to do some metal scrapping from old buildings to sell that for drug money. So when Max was being questioned by police, Max said that he noticed that these computers were in the car. So once he got to Bridgeport, he went to the building that him and his friends often stayed in and he brought them in and hid them in the building because he was afraid that they were going to get stolen out of the car. He said that he then went back to the building to go ahead and check on these laptops to see if they were still there, and they were not. They had been stolen. So he said that he told his dad about these stolen computers, and at first, Robert had actually asked these men if they knew anything about these stolen computers, and of course, they said no. He said he went around to different pawn shops to see if they had already been sold, but he did not find them anywhere. So once again, Robert wanted to go and confront these men, but this time he was ready for a fight. He told Max that they were gonna get in the car and go to this building and confront these men. When they got there, Robert told Max to wait in the car, and apparently there was some altercation between Robert and these men. Now, I know there was a lead pipe involved, so I don't know how badly everyone involved was injured. And I'm not even sure if this was the same day that Robert went missing or if it was a few days before. I think it was a few days before, not the same day, because if it was the same day, it'd probably look a lot more suspicious. And plus, Max had earlier said that he didn't see his dad since he took the car keys and he didn't see him the next morning, so unless he was lying, I think it was probably a few days before that. But either way, no matter when this was, it was right before he went missing. So this obviously stood up to police and they knew that they needed to go ahead and investigate this further. So police were able to actually track down these men and brought them in for questioning. And of course, all of the men that they questioned denied knowing anything about Robert or the laptop computers. They searched some of these men's cars. I don't think they searched all of them. And then they used cadaver dogs to search that building, but they found absolutely nothing. Now, Max was never considered an actual suspect in this case, but it was thought that he might at least know something about what happened. They definitely didn't think that Max could have hurt his own father, but his friends definitely could have. So police went ahead and gave Max a polygraph test, but he completely passed. So they had no reason to believe that Max knew absolutely anything about 
Robert's disappearance and they definitely didn't think he was involved. By August 15th, Max was released from prison after pleading guilty to these trespassing charges. So because of the fact that Max passed this polygraph test and the fact that they couldn't find anything else that could have pointed to the friends being involved, they had to start looking into other possibilities. So and now they were wondering if maybe there was some sort of accident or maybe Robert had taken his own life. So first they went and searched out a bunch of different areas around the house and then they searched forested areas nearby using cadaver dogs. They went out a few different times and expanded their search each time, but they ultimately came up with nothing. Next, they used sonar equipment to search Lake Zoar along the Housatonic River, which was near the Holden home as well. They searched for absolutely any sign of Robert, but still, they found absolutely nothing. Months went by with absolutely no leads, and of course, people were starting to lose hope. However, by September of that year, someone had come forward claiming to have seen Robert alive and well all the way in Rhode Island. This individual saw someone fitting Robert's description walking down Route 117 carrying a large bag with him. It seemed decently credible at the time, but the family refused to believe that this was actually Robert. He was a family man. There was no way that he could have just left his life like this. So police went even further and really started digging into Robert's life to find out if there was anything that could tell them if Robert might have walked away. Obviously, to the outside world and to his family, everything seemed so normal and good, but maybe he was just really good at hiding things. So first, police went through Robert's personal computer, and they actually found out that a month before he went missing, Robert had downloaded a program onto his computer that completely wiped it clean, so they couldn't access any of his search history or anything that he had been doing on the computer before it was wiped clean. Police didn't know if maybe this was something that was done just out of a sort of routine maintenance or something like that, or if it really did have a deeper meaning. But either way, this made it almost impossible to gather any information about his history usage on his computer. Next, police went to dig on his work computer. On this computer, police found out that Robert had actually been searching for one particular address in Rhode Island several times. Police went out and traveled to this address and investigated it thoroughly, but once again, it came up with absolutely nothing. But police were still very interested in this address and the fact that there was a sighting in the same state, so they decided to put Robert's face all over the media and asked people to call in for tips. And after doing this, several people called in with sightings. Now remember, Robert had purchased a map of the eastern United States. Plus, he was spotted there several times after putting his face out there in the media. However, Robert's family still didn't think that he had just left and went to Rhode Island and didn't contact them for whatever reason. Lori knew exactly why Robert had bought this map in the first place. Now, like I'd been saying throughout this entire video, Robert's number one goal was to help Max and get him onto a clean path. For a while, Robert had actually been planning a trip with Max to go on the Appalachian Trail so that they could just go out and hike together for an entire month, just the two of them for some father-son bonding time. He wanted to teach Max how to read a map, how to appreciate nature, and wanted to show him that there was so much more to this world than what he was involved with. But this wouldn't be easy. We know that Max has these behaviors that make him very difficult to control and make it very difficult to get him onto another path than the one he was already on. Maybe Max didn't want to go on this trip. Maybe this whole idea just started to look completely impossible, especially after this whole computer incident. So police started wondering if maybe Robert had just taken this map to go and explore by himself. Maybe while he was doing so on the Appalachian Trail, he was hurt. Maybe he had just gone with this map and just decided to stay. Maybe that was his original plan in the first place. His friend from work did mention that he wasn't totally happy working at the law office. 
he was starting to feel overwhelmed with everything that was going on in his life, which there was a lot that was going on in his life at that time. So maybe he just wanted to leave and never looked back. But still, police were never able to confirm any of these sightings, with some of the sightings even being disproven. There were some sightings of him in a town right next to Newtown, Connecticut, but again, none of these sightings could be confirmed. So at this point, police were basically just at square one. They had nothing definitively pointing towards him leaving, but they also didn't have anything pointing towards any other theory for that matter. I mean, you guys see Robert, and you know what he looks like. I'm sure that you have met at least one person who looks just like him. He looks just like your classic dad, so it isn't a stretch to think that maybe several people saw men who looked just like him and reported it, thinking that it was him. Police kept being pulled back and forth between thinking that they had just found him alive to thinking that something must have happened to him. The family was taken on this absolute emotional roller coaster every single time it came out that someone had possibly seen him, but police were never able to make that final confirmation saying that it was him. There were surveillance videos of men who looked just like him, but even after the family had looked at it, they thought that looks like him, but this person isn't acting like him. This person isn't walking like him. This person does not have the same mannerisms as him. So even after the family viewed it themselves, nothing was able to be confirmed. This is why I've been telling his story the way that I have going back and forth between the different possibilities because one, that's kind of how the timeline went. And you know, there's never ever one theory that they go on and then they're taken in this direction and then they, you know, rule that out. And then they, you know, it's never a linear path. It's always back and forth, back and forth between, you know, he's alive, he's not alive, he ran off, he had an accident. This is what the family went through they went on an emotional roller coaster and they were tugged back and forth between different things. So that is why I'm telling it like this because that's how it was and that's how I want you guys to feel. I want you to feel what they felt. I want you to feel like, oh, I know what I think happened. And then the next minute you're like, okay, well, that doesn't make sense anymore. This is what happened. And at the end of it, you have no idea because it's just been so back and forth. So the next possibility is one that I wasn't originally going to bring up because I just don't think there's absolutely any backing to it. And when I saw it in the documentary I watched, I just thought it was so ridiculous. But I do feel like some of you might bring it up, especially if you saw the same documentary and you might wanna know my thoughts. So I will briefly go over it. So just months before Robert went missing, the absolutely devastating Sandy Hook school shooting occurred, leaving 28 innocent children and staff dead. Some people had gone on and said that Robert's disappearance must somehow be connected to this shooting. Some people have said that maybe he was a witness or that he was involved somehow and that is just absolutely ridiculous to me and I think the only reason that people even think that is because he happened to live near the elementary school where it happened. There's absolutely zero information pointing towards it besides people just going on to online forums and making baseless accusations. It really hurt the family and brought absolutely zero help to the investigation and I certainly hope that none of you will go on and try and say things like this because I think that you should be respectful and make your theories based on information that is provable and available, not just ridiculous wild theories that make things more interesting to listen to the case. So that is all I'm gonna say about that. So at this point, that's all we know. Nothing else new has happened in the case and Robert's family has to live without knowing what happened to their husband and father. We sort of went through each theory as we went through the video, but I kind of want to bring everything together and review some of the theories so I can discuss my thoughts on each one. So first we have the theory that something happened to Robert in relation to Max's friends and drugs. To me, this does seem like a very plausible theory. We know that Max was involved with drugs, and we know that just before Robert went missing, he went and got into some sort of altercation with these individuals who were also involved in drugs. 
Now, of course, we know that not everyone who uses these types of substances is violent. In fact, most people who use these types of substances are not violent, but some people can be. I don't know the types of drugs that he was using, but some drugs can make you act in a certain way that does make you violent. But we also know that Max did take these polygraph tests and was cleared, and the building was searched, and that was also cleared. However, I want to say that it could be possible that Robert was not hurt right then and there. Maybe these friends know Max well enough to know where him and his father lived. Maybe these people were so upset with something that Robert said or just upset with the fact that he was yelling at them and accusing them of stealing computers that they may or may not have actually taken. That these friends found him the day that he went missing while Max was out doing something else. I didn't see anywhere exactly who Max was with the day that Robert went missing or if he even was with anyone. So I think it's possible that some of Max's friends or acquaintances knew that Max was not going to be home. Maybe he was with a different set of friends and they knew that so they used this as an opportunity to do something to Robert. Maybe Max has absolutely no idea and the friends that police had tracked down just were not the correct friends. Or maybe the police just didn't have enough information to thoroughly search and question these friends enough so that they just kind of slipped by without them being able to prove anything. That's also possible. Maybe these friends had other people do it so that nothing would get back to Max so that he didn't find out and didn't possibly retaliate or tell on them to police. I don't know how all of it could have gone down, but I do think that it's possible that people who Max knows and who are also involved in drugs could have done something to Max's father without Max's knowledge in a location other than that building or the home. So the next possible theory is that Robert just left his life, which I also think could be possible. Now, with a lot of cases, as we know, I just don't see this being the case, but with this, I do think that there are a lot of things that could be pointing towards him leaving his life. He had a son that was completely out of control at the time that he went missing. He had a history of sort of giving up and wanting to go out on his own to, you know, provide for his family in a different way. Whether he had planned to go missing the first time or just wanted to figure things out, he still left with not telling anybody. He bought a map of the Eastern United States and took out $600 from an ATM the very same day that he went missing. Now, within these different aspects and this theory, there are a lot of different things to sort of discuss. First, I will mention that it's strange that he decided to go pay some bills and then mow his lawn right before he went missing if he was choosing to leave. Lori had said that every single time she went on a trip, he would get the house ready for her to come home and he always had these surprises for her when she got home and it was always so sweet and made sure the house was perfectly clean and put together. He missed her when she was gone and he would make that very apparent when he would speak to her while she was away. And again, we know that he had a lot of cash in that safe that he could have taken, but he didn't. But for this specific one, I will say that he could still be a caring father even if he decided to leave. Maybe he just wanted to make Lori happy one last time before he knew he was going to leave and he just cleaned up and mowed the lawn and paid some bills so that she wouldn't have to. Maybe he just took enough money, that $600, to move to a new location and find a new job, purposely leaving the thousands of dollars behind for Lori to find so that she could use it for the kids and not just be out of luck. I feel like if he was going to leave, he wouldn't just want to leave them with nothing and take all of the money that he had. We know the first time he went missing, it was specifically because he couldn't provide for them. So I feel like he wouldn't just take everything that he owned and just left them with nothing. Also, we know that he got the map of the Eastern United States the literal day that he went missing. If he was truly buying this map for him and Max, I just think that this is a very weird coincidence. We know that for whatever reason, his personal computer was completely wiped clean and his work computer had several searches for this specific address in Rhode Island, which is where a lot of people claim to have seen him and where he bought the map for. But then at the same time, we know that his wallet and his keys were found. Now, I think the wallet could be explained by maybe him not wanting to be tracked. 
he wouldn't want to be identified and he wouldn't want to be using his credit cards but without his keys he had no transportation he left his car and his keys at the home and i mean he could have gotten a ride somewhere or taken a cab but i feel like this is one of the first things that police would have looked into and i'm sure they did to see if you know there was any sort of record of robert or anyone that looked like robert taking a cab anywhere but it didn't seem like they found anything. Plus, their neighbor was the one that confirmed that Robert was in fact out mowing his lawn when Max left. So I feel like if there was a cab picking him up, especially because this was a suburban area, the neighbor would have seen that. It's out of the ordinary enough that I think if a cab came and picked him up, that the neighbor would have seen that. But obviously we don't know for sure. The other thing is that, you know how I mentioned earlier that Robert does look like your classic dad and that is why he could have been mistaken for other people. Well, this also could have been used to his advantage. I mean, there's no way to confirm or deny a sighting of someone unless they somehow track this person down and get their ID or see them on surveillance and the family is very confident that it's them. So maybe someone really did see him in one of these sightings, not saying all of them, but maybe one of these sightings was true and they just have no way to confirm it. Or maybe he just blends in to the general population so well that people have seen him several times and no one's thought anything of it. I think that should always be considered in cases because not everyone is always paying attention to each other at all times, so he could easily be living somewhere out there. And, you know, this case is from 2013. It's just not gotten a lot of attention, so he could be out there living and just people have seen him and just didn't know that he was a missing person. So the next theory is that Robert took his own life. Now, I personally do not think that this is a very likely theory. I feel like if he did take his own life that he probably would have been found and I feel like that he probably would have left something behind. I feel like taking your own life and leaving your family is very different because if he started his own life and went and lived on his own, he can still go in and check on his family from afar every so often. but. If he took his own life, there's no way that he could do that, obviously. But I guess you could argue that 20 years prior, when he ran off the first time, he was just so ashamed and embarrassed that he left. So maybe this time he was very ashamed and embarrassed for whatever reason um, and took his own life and just didn't want anyone to know because of that. But I just don't think I see that being possible. I do think that typically, not always, but typically people show some sort of warning signs for this type of thing. And I think that, you know, he was surrounded by his friends, his family, his coworkers. And I feel like if he was showing these types of signs, I feel like someone would have noticed at least something at some point. Again, it's very rare that someone shows absolutely no signs and then takes their life in a snap decision without any planning or anyone noticing anything. I mean, a lot of times it does happen where no one notices anything and then, you know, after someone takes their own life or goes missing, then they start realizing like, okay, I, I actually did see these signs and, you know, I wish I saw them before and there's a lot of regret obviously with that, like, why didn't I do anything? Why did no one do anything? But when there's cases like this and people don't even think that they saw any signs, I, I feel like that's very telling and again, I think a lot of times that they show signs but not always of course and a lot of people are better at hiding things than others plus i think that he was at an age where if he was showing any signs that people it would have stood out to people because again like people my age or you know in their teenage years if they're depressed or anxious or showing any sort of signs a lot of times unfortunately it's just passed off as being moody or you know classic teenager or young adult um, being depressed or moody. So then when something does happen, people again regret it and wish that they said something or did something. But when you're in your 50s, people would notice this type of thing, I feel like, a lot more than when you're younger. But that's just me. I don't have any evidence to actually prove that, but that's just my opinion. But either way, I do think that the possibility of him running off and starting a new life is a lot more likely than him taking his own life. So the last theory is one that I touched on earlier, but I do find it rather interesting. 
this is the possibility that maybe he either left to start a new life or that he left for, you know, some sort of temporary, you know, trip to blow off some steam or whatever. But then while he was out, he was hurt or some sort of accident happened. I do feel like this is definitely possible. And again, we know that he wanted to go to the Appalachian Trail at some point. We know that he bought a map for that specific area. And even though we know that he was originally planning on taking Max, he could have easily changed his mind and just decided to go on his own and take this month long hike on his own. Maybe he just wanted to leave for a little bit like he had before, but while he was out, some sort of accident happened. Again, we know that he did at least have a history of going out on his own and not telling anyone, whether it be because he wanted to start a new life or for a different reason. We know that he did have a history of doing that. So maybe he did that again and was planning on being gone for three weeks or however long, but then while he was out, something happened. I don't think that the Appalachian Trail was ever really searched, but even if it was, the trail is over 2,000 miles long and that is a ton of area to cover. So who even knows how far he could have gotten and within this, you know, 2,000 mile trail, there's several places that you can start as well. So who knows if he even started at the location that was closest to him or if he drove to, you know, some other location and started there. We don't know where he would have started or where he would have been. So it's very possible that even if they did search the Appalachian Trail that he would never be found. I do think that it's possible that whether he wanted to leave forever or just wanted to go on the Appalachian Trail hike to sort of decompress, I could see it being possible that he had some sort of accident happening and that he just wasn't found. At the end of the day, I think any of these theories besides the one of him taking his own life are equally possible. I do think that there's a very small chance that, you know, that one is possible, but I think the rest of them are pretty equally possible in my mind. But I also think that no matter which one of them is true, I think that the whole computer incident definitely could have sparked it. Whether he was hurt because of it, whether he got fed up and left because of it, or whether he decided to go hike on that trail alone because of it, I definitely think it could be related to what happened in so many different ways. I don't think it's a coincidence that all of this happened with him going missing right after things started to get hard with Max and right after this entire feud and altercation with the computers. I do know that at one point after all of this happened, he felt incredibly guilty about all of this. He felt that Max doing drugs and continuing to steal things and getting into trouble was all his fault. Now, do I think that this could have made him upset enough to leave his own life? I do think that it could be possible, um, but do I think that it's enough to make him want to take his own life and leave his family with absolutely nothing? I personally don't think so. If he did end up taking his own life, unless he did it in a place that was like impossible to find him, that he knew no one would find him. I think that if, you know, he knew that, you know, the family was going to find him, that he knew it would have such a harmful effect on Max and the family that things would just get so much worse. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I don't think that he would have taken his own life because again, if his family found him like that, things in the life would have gotten a lot worse. But if he was still out there somewhere and knew that, you know, he could keep an eye on them from afar or if something really did go really wrong that he could always come back, I think that's a lot more likely. But when it comes to all of this, I do think that the most likely thing that he would have done would have just been to leave for a little bit to decompress so that he could come back and deal with things again. I think that's something that very common that a lot of people do when things are getting rough in their life, but maybe something happened that prevented him from coming back. I don't know, I'm very curious to see what you guys think because all of these theories seem very, very likely to me. My heart just absolutely goes out to Lori and those three boys who are now men. They just have to go on with their lives just acting like they didn't just lose their father. Robert had some troubles, but he loved his boys and his boys loved him. I know that all three of the men are going on to do great things. I know one of them even went on to get his master's degree and Lori is such a strong woman and just had to deal with all of this without letting it completely get in the way and ruin her life. 
I just think that is so amazing. Robert Hoagland was a 50 year old white male standing at six feet tall, weighing 175 pounds with blue eyes and mostly bald hair with some closely shaved hair on the sides when he went missing from Newtown, Connecticut on July 28th, 2013. If you have seen Robert or know absolutely anything about his disappearance, please contact the Newtown police at 203 426 5841. This is truly a case that is relying on tips, so again, if you know absolutely anything, I urge you to make that phone call. The number will be listed below. So that is all I have for today's video, and now I want to know your guys' thoughts. Do you think that Robert went missing in connection to something with Max and his acquaintances or friends? Do you think he went off to start his own life? Do you think that he took his own life, or do you think he had some sort of accident? please let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. Also, if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. Like I said at the beginning of my video, pretty much every single case that I cover is directly from that email. So make sure to go ahead and send over your case suggestions. With that, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.